Good morning, good morning. Hey, Harvey Rachel. Good morning. Good morning, good morning to you. Happy Tuesday. Hey, Harvey Danita. Good morning. How are you today? Good morning, good morning to you guys. Good morning. Hey, Harvey Troy, Harvey Aliyah. Good morning. That's right. Happy Tuesday morning. Hey, Harvey Rebel. What's going on? Good morning. Good morning to you guys. Hey, Harvey Carolyn. Harvey Delane. Harvey Donald. Good morning. Hey, Harvey Val. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, get started again. Hey, Harvey Eva. A lot to cover on today. Gave you a lot yesterday. Have a lot again today. Good morning, Harvey Delisha. So, we're going to go ahead and get started. Amen. Good morning. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness. Welcome to the Gathering of Hearts and your daily dosage is a continuation from yesterday. It takes fasting for uh, the transition and reposition. It takes fasting for the transition and the reposition. Hey, Harvey Belinda and Harvey Smitty. And so yesterday I started giving tips. Hey, Harvey Tisha, I started giving tips Um for fasting. And so the first one was fasting should be a part of your spiritual lifestyle. The second one uh, was fasting should be for a reason and a purpose. And we started going under those going, I'm sorry, going over those reasons. And we got to number four. Uh, number one was for ministry or preparation. Number two was for God's wisdom. Number three was for grief. Number four was for worship. And we're going to start with number five on this morning. Hey, Harvey and Andrea. So so if you have not um, you need to catch up, you might want to go back and watch the replay from yesterday. So number five, another reason or uh, purpose for fasting is repentance. And we find that in Jonah 5 and verse 10, and I'm reading from the message translation. And it says the people of Nineveh listened and trusted God. They proclaimed a citywide fast and dressed in burlap to show their repentance Everyone did it, rich and poor, famous and obscure, leaders and followers. And so here um, in this account, they realize they are in sin. They're aware of their sin and they're sorry for it. You know, their hearts are full of sorrow. Their hearts are full of repentance. But look what verse 10 says. It says this. It says, God saw what they had done, that they had turned away from their evil lives. He did change his mind about them. What he said he would do to them, he didn't do. And so we see here that, you know, if you're struggling with sin or if you're wanting to lay down those weights, remember we talked about that, I think last week, like laying um, aside the weights and the sin that so easily beset us. So it shows right here in this account that if you're struggling with sin and if you wanted to lay down those weights, that you may do it through fasting, that fasting will help you get through that. And so it says that they had a, a, a um, broken spirit, like a contrite heart, like what David talks about in Psalm 51. And it, but we see what God did for them because he saw what they did because he saw their hearts because he saw the repentance that he changed his mind about what he said he was going to do to them amen number six deliverance and um we're in mark 9 14 to 29 and you know this account in mark um 29 uh I'm sorry, Mark 9, 14 through 29. You know this account of the man bringing his son to the disciples because he wanted, you know, the disciples to cast out this demon that was in his son and the disciples couldn't do it, remember? So he went to Jesus and he was like, I took, you know, my son to your people, to your disciples and they couldn't do it. You know, Jesus was like, what do you mean they couldn't do it? He was just like, how long are you guys going to be with me? You know, haven't I already gone over this with you? He's like, bring the little boy to me and he cast the demon out but before that he asked the man, he said do you believe? The man says, I believe but help my unbelief and so then, you know he cast the demon out of the little boy and the disciples are like, whoo, how in in the world did you do that and God Jesus said this he said only this power this kind of power only comes from fasting and praying and so here we see that the little boy was delivered but it comes from the power of fasting and praying and so if you um like the disciple like like this little boy needs to be delivered you may want to fast and so anytime you need to be delivered from something or someone 
You might want to fast. You might need deliverance from smoking, from drinking, from cussing, um, from gluttony. You know, any of those things, you may want to start a fast so that you can be delivered from it. You may need to be delivered from someone. You know, you might need to leave that, that man's wife alone and you might need to leave that, that woman's husband alone. You, you might need to get out of that bed because you're a single woman or a single man. You might need to just, you know, you need to be delivered from that fasting is the way to do it. Amen. The next one, number seven. And also, you know, let me give you another example for um, deliverance. And what was it? Second Chronicles 20. Remember Jehoshaphat. Remember, he was afraid, you know, they were coming against him. And it says that Jehovah called a fast in the land. And it said that he appointed some singers. They got the singing. And it says that he ended up, you know, at the end of it, um, that it took them three days to get their stuff, that they got delivered from the large army that was coming against them. So once again, there's another example of deliverance where you can use it um, in reference to fasting. Number seven, and I'm trying to get through this, not rushing, but trying to get through it so that we can get to some of the other points. Number seven, another reason is intercession for someone else. And that's found in um, Isaiah 58 verses three through seven. And here the Jews were wondering why they hadn't, um, why the Lord didn't acknowledge their fast. And God said, rather than repent for your actions and rather than seeking to be closer to me, you're fasting for worldly items. You're fasting for worldly events. And he said, instead of showing compassion to others, you guys have been cruel when it comes to the workforce. He says, when you fast as I want you to fast, he says, you fast to break chains. So you're doing it for others. You're fasting for the um, injustice, freedom, to free the oppressed, to cancel debt, to get rid of exploitation in the workplace. This is fasting for others, not fasting for yourself. So let me tell you this. You guys know I'm always talking about having an accountability partner. I'm always talking about watch your circle. And I'm saying this, that if you don't have somebody in your circle that will turn their plate down, that will fast for you, you need to upgrade your circle. You need people in your circle that when you don't have the strength to pray and to fast, that they will do it for you. I am a firm believer for this. I use it on people all of the time. I'll be like, you know what? You're not listening to me. You're not listening to God. I'm going to have to go up on you and I'm going to have to fast for you because I am determined that when I know that there's a call on somebody's life, I, I am determined the devil will not have my friends. The devil will not have my family. And if I have to go up on you. If I have to fast and make sure that you stay in the will of God, that is what I'm going to do. So I have told family members and I have told friends, that's all right. You don't have to listen to me. I'm about to go up on you because I know that God will get your attention. And so I'm saying to you, heartbeat nation, that if you do not have somebody in your immediate circle, that regardless of what you're saying, that will go on a fast for you, you need to upgrade your circle. Number eight, Another reason for um, fasting is for victory. In Judges um, 20, um, it says that all the people went up to Bethel and sat weeping before God and fasted until the evening. The next day, the Lord gave them victory over the Benjaminites. And so here... If you're feeling defeated about a situation, you may need or you may want a victory. Fast that God will give you the tools, that God will give you the strategy to win. And see, in Judges 20, we know that there was a war going on between Israel and um, the Benjaminites. And it says that in that account that one husband began to tell his story and he talked about how bad it was and how they treated them like slaves and how he they raped the women and that his wife had gotten or... Um, his love interest had gotten raped and how it was just so crazy that he cut her piece, her body in pieces and then sent pieces of her body. Now, you know, that's crazy, right? He sent pieces of her body to the various tribes. And so here they were looking for victory. And we see that it says that they went up to Bethel and sat weeping before God and fasted until the evening. The next day, the Lord gave them victory. And so again, if you're feeling defeated about a situation, and you need or you want victory fast that God will give you the strategy that God will give you the tools that God will put the people in your life that you need to help you to win amen so those are the eight reasons um or purposes for fasting let's move on to number three tip number three I'm gonna try to get to tip three and four we'll see what happens tip number three Fasting requires a clear plan. You have to have a plan. So the plan is this. 
How long will I fast? Will I fast for 40 days and 40 nights? Will I fast for 21 days? Is it a fast that I'm going to do weekly to get my flesh up under subjection? How long will I fast? The next one, what am I fasting from? Am I fasting from food? Am I fasting from TV? Am I fasting from social media? Uh, what's another one? Am I fasting from coffee, caffeine, chocolate, um, sodas? What am I fasting from? Um, fasting from gossip. I'm trying to, you know, get my mouth in order. There has to be, you know, something that you are fasting from. And then what type of fast is it? Is it a Daniel's fast? You know, where you're just doing fruits and vegetables. Is it a juice fast where you're juicing the entire time? You know, is it the um, six in the morning? Uh, what is it? Sunrise to sunset. What type of fast are you going on? Because your fast has to have a plan. Amen. And so here's another thing that if you're married, this is why you've got to plan out a fast. It can't be something that you just wake up and say, oh, I'm going to do this. You need to put thought behind your fast so that you can get results. And so like, even if you're married, first Corinthians seven, three, five says this, it says, if you're married, your spouse has to be in agreement with your fast because you have a responsibility to meet the sexual needs of your spouse. That husbands shouldn't be defrauding wives and wives should not be defrauding husbands. That it says that the only time, you know, because it says your body does not belong to you. You don't have authority over your body. Your body belongs to your spouse and that it says this when we get back. So pretty much this, I'm not talking about boyfriend and girlfriends and I, for my age, we too old to be saying it anyway. But anyway, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about your boo or your bae and y'all don't have papers. I'm talking about married spouses, legally married. Let's get back to the text. It says your body does not belong to your own, but it belongs to your spouse. So you don't have exclusive rights to your body that your spouse does. Therefore, here it is, don't refuse your spouse of the goods, pretty much. The only time you can refuse if, if there is a mutual agreement to fasting and praying. And so do you see how serious fasting is about you have to have a plan. You've got to, if you're married, you shouldn't be going on a fast without talking to your spouse. Your spouse should be in agreement with your fast. So you've got to plan or prepare for fasting. So don't get caught up in fasting just because somebody told you to. There has to be a plan. There has to be a length. There has to be a reason. There has to be a type. And you have to know what it is that you are giving up so that you can get the results that you need. And I don't think that I'm going to have time to do all of number four, but we're going to get started here. Fasting is not a diet plan. You know what? I'm going to stop because I'm not going to have time to finish number four. We'll pick up number four on tomorrow. Amen. I'm not going to have time. It's quite a bit of stuff under here for number four. So just concentrate on what I gave you. Go back and look at yesterday so that you can get this thing because I am serious about this year we're doing things differently. We are going to get results because for God wants me whole, the word, the year that God has given me is the is this. It's the year of transition and reposition, which means if you follow my instructions, if you are obedient to my word, I'm going to transition you through where you are and I'm going to reposition to where I would have you. And so fasting is a part of it. It's how you get closer to God. It's how you get clarity about your life. And here's another thing. When you fast for something from 21 days, whatever the period is, don't be so anxious to get back to, you know, because sometimes we're like, if we're fasting from me, I can't wait till 21 days so that I can eat meat. You fasted for 21 days. You've gotten your flesh up under subjection. Why would you go back? Keep moving forward. If you chose to fast for, from something, you did it for a reason. And once you get on top of that thing, don't become slave to it again. Amen. Well, listen, that's your daily dosage for today. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness. Listen, if you have not followed on um, social media platforms, please do so. God wants me whole. Go to YouTube and subscribe so that you can get all of your dosages. They're there in one place where you can just like get, get just keep getting them. Just, you know, you can't overdose on it because there are no negative side effects, right? 
So you want to do that so that you can get the word down in your heart. Come on, let's do this thing. Let's close it out how we do. Say, God wants me whole and I am getting whole by the minute. Again, I'm Regina Banks. I love you guys a bunch. I'll see you right back here tomorrow morning at 730 where we'll pick up number four, that fasting is not a diet plan. I love you guys. See you in the morning.